The sliding trays are even easier than building the carcass. They're just all nailed and glued together. But what might not seem obvious is how the sliding trays slide. What do they slide on? Where do these things go? And essentially you're going to use scrap pieces left over from the construction to make runners inside the case. And the bottom runner is going to be a piece of three-quarter inch uh, poplar or softwood or hardwood or whatever you have used for your skirts. And then on top of that is going to be a piece of three-quarter. And this piece of three-quarter plywood is going to be left over from the carcass. And on top of that is a piece of half-inch plywood that is left over from making the tills and the lid, uh, the, the raised panel. And as you can see, this makes a stepped array that uh, then the uh, trays that slide back and forth can, um, can sit on. Now, getting these into the chest might seem tricky, but I've built enough of these and so I, I know uh, a shortcut. So what we're going to do is, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a little spacer out of uh, leftover whatever you have around the shop. This is a 1 by 12 and this is going to be the distance between the bottom of the chest and the bottom of your first runner. So we put this here up against the wall you put that against the wall, Ty, please? So we put the spacer up against the floor, and then we put the uh, three-quarter inch poplar, then the three-quarter inch plywood pressed up against there, and then the half-inch plywood. Yeah, and you want them as tight as possible, but not too crazy tight. And then we're going to uh, just glue and nail those to the wall, take the spacer out, and we're good to go. Now, I've already built the um, uh, the trays, and so we're going to put them in here so you can see how that works. And, and the trays are so easy, they almost build themselves. So this is the largest tray, and it rides on the hardwood. So we, there we go. This is the second tray. And you notice each tray is a little longer than the one below it. So they fit right in. And so that is how the, uh, all these work. And now the trays can slide forward, back and forth. You can remove trays. There's nothing uh, restraining them from the top. Uh, some people build chests with little runners that stop the trays from coming out, and that's a real pain in the butt. But let's pull this tray out real fast, and I'll show you how it's put together. So this is all half-inch plywood that's left over from the rest of that sheet that made the raised panel for the lid. And all the cutting lists and the drawings and all the sizes are on the online, the uh, extras on the DVD. Um, and what you'll find is that all the bottoms are nine inch wide, half inch plywood. And then the fronts and backs are merely glued to the bottom and nailed to the bottom. And then you can cut these uh, ends and dividers uh, and fit them uh, front to back, uh, glue them, nail them with four penny nails and uh, these just almost assemble themselves. Now this one's a little tight. So all the others are pretty good, but this one's I'm not real happy with. So you can see, yeah. And then when we, it, it's okay, but when you slide it forward, it kind of jams because we're a little tight up here at front. So I'm gonna plane this one down a little bit. I'm gonna plane down the, the, the short edges here, the ends, and so that will slide better because these should really, just slide like uh, more like butter than uh, like than than like glue. So, <laughs> so uh, that is uh, about it for the sliding tray. So we're going to get those uh, planed down. Then we're going to nail in uh, and glue in all these little uh, runners for the for the spacers. And then we just have to do a little touch up. And I think we're ready for a coat of paint. All right, let's pull this thing out. If you remember, the top till was a little tight. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to dress this and get it sliding nicely in the chest. And in the meantime, I took the liberty of painting the chest. Um, now I'm going to clamp this up in a uh, tail vise in the bench. If you don't have a tail vise, you can clamp it to anything, even to you know a kitchen countertop with a couple uh, bar clamps. Um, and what I'm trying to do here is just dress. Uh, this long edge a little bit so that it'll slide because this was binding up in the front part of the chest. So we'll just take a block plane or if you don't have a block plane, 
um, a sanding block with a piece of, like I think that's 120, grit paper. So we're just going to trim these guys up. And now, these don't have to be 100% beautiful because they're going to be entirely covered by the sides of your chest. Ooh, there's some nastiness. So I'm going to do both sides. And the less you do, the better. You don't want to like take off a whole load of material because then it'll be too loose. And you'll think, oh, well, too loose is better than too tight, right? And the answer is no. Um, th because these tills are so long, so, you know, so ginormous, is uh, they easily rack in that chest if you uh, have them too small. So it's really, really fussy business here. So. And then the last thing I'm going to do before I put it in is I'm going to take some canning wax. This is, um, you know, it's basically just paraffin. Um, and you can use a candle if you want, uh, but I get this at the grocery store. It's about three or four dollars for a big, big box of it. And that's pretty much a lifetime supply and use it for every, lubricating everything. And no, it doesn't affect finishing. This is essentially just mineral spirits that has had its melting point altered. And it provides a nice lubrication. So we'll drop it in and see how it slides. It's better, it's better, but we still have, see it's still, so we're sliding nicely here, but it's still jamming up there at the front a little bit. So I'm gonna take a look and see where it's jamming, see if I can determine what is out. And I think it's this front corner up here. So I'm gonna make note of that. Pull it out. This is the offending corner. And we'll uh, plane that down some more until it and the other trays fit smoothly. And then we just have a few more details and we're about ready to fill that chest up with tools. Well, we're getting down to the details of this chest and uh, you know, we're going to start dealing with the hardware on it and you know I, I home center hardware is great because it's cheap but it, it stinks because it's usually all covered in zinc to protect it from the elements if it's going to be outside and uh, zinc hardware to me it just looks it looks nasty here's the chest lift that i picked up from the home center for about four dollars and um, you know the zinc plating is is uh, really takes away from it and it's not going to go anywhere meaning after about you know 20 years it'll still look like this so what we're going to do is we are going to strip that zinc off and here you can see uh, the same hinge uh, before the, we had uh, the zinc uh, stripped off and here is the after. Now the after looks like a real chest hinge. And so, uh, you know, we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna take this zinc off. And there are lots of ways to take zinc off and a lot of them are really stupid and dangerous. So we're gonna do something that is completely safe, completely uh, non-toxic and easy to do. And that process is to use citric acid. And this is used in, in canning. So this isn't like acid that's gonna you know, burn your flesh off. This is just uh, you know, acid used for uh, pickling stuff. And uh, you can get this at health food stores or any place where they sell canning materials, uh, and it's cheap. This is like 15 bucks for a five pound bag, which will last you forever. And so you just take a solution of water, uh, well, warm water, and you pour in, I don't know, like a quarter to a half cup. It, it, it's not really, critical the recipe but just enough so uh, it gets dissolved and you can put your fingers in it now the only thing i'll tell you is if you have any small cuts on your hands you're gonna feel them i mean it'll burn and you know that's okay and then all you do is you just drop them in the solution uh, depending on how thick the zinc zinc coating is uh, it can take anywhere from 30 minutes to um, you know a couple hours if it's really really thick um, Usually 30 minutes will we'll do it and it'll start bubbling here and uh, we'll go and I will put the casters in there too because there's this uh, zinc coating on the um, 
on there. And uh, put that in there. I even put the screws in there, so the screws look nice and dark too. And we'll stir it a couple times. Put in a little more acid, it's cheap. And I don't know if you can start to see it, but it is starting to bubble there. And uh, it'll start, it, it doesn't like get all foamy or stuff, it just bubbles. And, and then after a while, you'll take it out and it'll look like this. And when you're done, you uh, wipe off all the water so it doesn't rust. You squirt it with some oil, even, you know, just WD-40, wipe it down, and put it on the chest and it's going to look great. And in five years, it's going to look nice and grody. So we'll set this aside and uh, then when it's done, we'll attach it to the chest.